Welcome to a special episode of The Electric Trucker. Today is all about DesignWorks battery swapping system. The huge advantage of a battery swapping system is the reduced grid load and charging flexibility. Our truck has the chassis from a diesel Volvo FM, but with its own electric drivetrain, four electric motors, and a 450 kilowatt hour battery, the battery is split into two 225 kilowatt hour packs. The truck can also be charged at a standard charging station using CCS with up to 350 kilowatts and AC charging with 222 kilowatt connections. This truck is from Reinhardt Logistics. They use it for food deliveries to Berlin. They drive from here in Lubenau to Berlin and one route is 250 kilometers. And with the battery swapping taking only 10 minutes, they can immediately do a second trip. The second partner travels from Berlin to Dresden. That's 400 kilometers and we're exactly between Berlin and Dresden, which means they swap the battery either on the way there or back. This way they can do two trips using the maximum driving time allowed for a truck driver. We started with the project application in 2018, submitted it in 2019, and this project has been running since 2020. And here is the swapping station. We can see the license plate of our vehicle and now confirm the swap. There is a logistics dashboard that both the driver and dispatch can use. They can book slots and specify when they'll arrive and when they'll need a new battery. Then the system optimizes which batteries need to be charged and when. Now the system starts up, the gate opens, and we can drive the vehicle in. There are two markings that you drive along, and on the left, there's an interface that shows you if you're positioned correctly. Now the truck is being aligned so that the, the battery system and the station are parallel. With Neo cars, there are rollers on the ground that align the car, but with trucks, it's all a bit more difficult because they're much heavier. Now we engage the handbrake, shift to neutral, and get out. Now we need to unlock the panels and lift it up. Now we can activate the whole thing by pressing the button and do the same on the other side. Up here, the locking mechanism is opened, and when the system detects that it's completely open, this LED turns blue. Blue means the vehicle is ready for the battery swap. The batteries sit in this mounting and are lifted out. Each battery weighs 1.3 tons. In the current setup, you need to perform a few manual steps on the vehicle. This can, of course, be completely automated in the future, but for this project, we had to make some compromises and limit it to the essentials. We have two employees from TU Berlin who are watching for safety. Now the platforms are extending from both sides to lift out the batteries. Unlike with cars, they don't need to build anything into the ground because the truck batteries are positioned so high up. We've learned a lot from building this system. It works very well, but there's obviously tremendous potential for improvement, especially regarding speed. With the next version of this system, the swap will be completed in under five minutes. And of course, there are other small things we can optimize in the system. Now the system has lifted the batteries, is moving them sideways and then back down to the ground. Then the battery is stored in the shelves and can be recharged. This system also has enormous advantages for repairs. If you have, a, you have a defect in the battery or it needs maintenance, it can be swapped out and the truck is immediately back on the road instead of being out of service for several weeks. You can also use different batteries and different cell technologies as long as they're made for the same form factor. The exciting thing is that this is just a completely normal truck. It has regular batteries and doesn't need any additional systems, cooling or other elements. Just the pins that lock the batteries in place. The additional costs for the truck are really minimal. And it's also exciting from a cost perspective because you can rent the battery instead of buying it. An electric truck today usually costs about twice as much as a diesel truck and half of that cost is the battery. When you rent the battery, the electric truck would cost the same as a diesel truck and the battery rental can be calculated as operating costs. This is good news for shipping companies that can't invest a lot of money up front. Now the battery swap is finished. We need to press both buttons again, put the panel back down and we can continue driving. Let's have a look at the, the charging technology. We have a charging system that monitors the four battery compartments and the batteries are currently on standby. Uh, so we don't charge them to 100% because they won't be picked up over the weekend. We have an AC converter in this cabinet which converts the grid power alternating current into a direct current system of 790 volts. And then we have several DC-DC converters on both sides. The entire system has a 360 kilowatt grid connection split into 180 kilowatts per side. We can charge the three batteries in one cabinet with one DC-DC converter each at 60 kilowatts simultaneously, or we can connect them together and quickly charge one battery at 180 kilowatts. So we can be flexible depending on demand. Um, we can also use the batteries to feed energy back into the grid because these are bi-directional DC-DC converters. And we can use our own batteries for peak shaving. Um, that means we use the energy from the existing batteries to charge another battery quickly when necessary. The big advantage is that it does not require a strong grid connection, which means it's cheaper and can be set up more quickly. 
Just one of the charging stations I use with my truck has the same grid connection as this entire setup here. That's pretty crazy. With this system and the current grid connection, we could serve up to 20 trucks if we expand the battery rack a bit. Setting up a system like this where the grid connection is already in place takes about one to two months. Battery swapping for trailers would also be possible this way, but make it more complex. We're working on making this kind of system compatible with different vehicles from different truck manufacturers in the future. The key is that the infrastructure is standardized so that a single swapping station can serve a variety of trucks. We're convinced that battery swapping makes a lot of sense for fleet operations that handle more than 20 vehicles per day. Uh, we want to develop a public network, but it makes more sense initially to set up these stations with project partners and large logistics companies. They know exactly which routes their trucks are driving so the swapping stations can be used much more efficiently. We founded the company eHaul to build out this infrastructure for our clients, and we don't see this as competition to traditional charging stations. Battery swapping serves a different use case because driver brakes can't always be aligned with charging brakes and you can't expand the grid connection indefinitely for more charges. For my current work schedule, battery swapping would not make a lot of sense because I have to take my 45 minute break anyway during which I can just charge at a station. But in scheduled transport, where trucks run in multi-shift operation, it's a different story. When the vehicle is constantly on the move, a battery swapping system makes a lot of sense to eliminate idle time. Um, the swapping station we are building for companies is designed for a one megawatt connection with which you can swap batteries for up to 50 vehicles per day. To achieve the same throughput with charging stations, um, you need five or six megawatt chargers. So in terms of grid expansion, it's significantly cheaper. For the batteries in the station, we assume you need about 30% more batteries than vehicles. So if you have 100 trucks, you'd need 130 batteries. But that doesn't mean 30% more cost. It's more of a financing issue since you have to invest a bit more upfront. But the cost model can also be flexible by renting the batteries or paying per use. In that case, our company takes the risk of owning the batteries and the customer has to invest less upfront. I really wanted to stop by and see this in person. People often ask why there's so little innovation happening in Germany, but this is proof that things are moving forward. Such projects take time and it's great to see that it works. We're currently in a funding round, and after that, we will form partnerships with other vehicle manufacturers. One area where we see absolutely no problem is customer interest. We're talking to a lot of logistics companies who are eager to test this. They're looking around the world, and the demand is so high that this technology will find its way into Europe over the next few years. And CATL, the world's largest battery manufacturer, has also developed a battery swapping system for trucks, which is a clear sign that they believe in this approach as well. Thanks again for showing me around. I was truly impressed, and I'll definitely come by again once the next version of the swapping station is built. The future of truck logistics isn't set in stone yet, but building a battery swapping system for trucks is so much easier than it is for passenger cars. So I'm genuinely curious to see where things are heading. Thanks for watching, have a great day, and see you next time. Ciao.